I've always been open for change, but I've never really put my my full into like becoming a different person. This is like my first time, you know, and it and it it it's it, it's feeling. It definitely doesn't feel normal, but it feels like there's a a like horizon to this way of living. It feels so good, like because I'm in that place right now where I feel like I'm 100 genuinely addicted to working out and eating healthy. Yeah, and I've never been so in the state of mind in my life, and it just feels so weird to have kind of turned that corner and to be addicted to doing things that are 100 percent positive for my overall mm-hmm. life which is that's a freaky feeling what for, made that change for you i mean i guess it's just been gradual like i've been going on a personal trainer for a couple of years and then over the past like six months it's just sort of got more and more like focused on like okay if you're gonna really be focused on your health and your fitness and everything you need to actually fucking really do everything right and it's mm-hmm. been just like great feeling you know i like i'm still smoking hella weed i'm still smoking hella spliffs so i'm Me fucking too. tobacco too, out the ass which is Me like too. that's my one thing i'm holding on to and there's a big part of me that wants to just stop but it's like man that's my one thing i got going on you know? that, that's what i'm having <laughs> trouble with bro i'm like what do you everyone's like yo you want to live you want to live i'm like what am i living for motherfucker like if mm. i don't have something like i can't keep trying to be holy bro that's the, that's the other thing about this is like i'm not trying to be holy i'm not trying to be like perfect like yo i'm flawed as a motherfucker now more than ever because like i know like i'm dealing with my past one thing that i've realized is that if you don't live in the present mm. um if you don't live in the present, if you're not in the moment, uh, you will have to live your past in the future, mm. right? So me not being there for so long and being being out of my head has created this like thing now that I have to fucking deal with all this bullshit that I should have dealt with before, you know? I could have had these conversations with my father. I could have had these conversations with my mother. I could have... I could have tried to help out my sister. I could have, you know what I'm saying? And like, mm. shout out my fucking sister. She does my PR. She's my, like, guardian angel. She, like, helped raise me. Like, my sister is a fucking angel. She's about to move out to California. I love you. Wow. Yeah, so. You got to ultimately think that this is going to be good for your career, though. I mean, aside yes. from just the fact that you're going to probably be alive a lot longer. And yeah. for a while, it seemed like you might be, weren't going to be alive for very long at all there, yeah. huh? Yeah. Uh, but it's like, you, you got to know that, like, over time, people want to see you grow. And people are not going to be satisfied if you don't grow like the party boy thing it's like it definitely probably served you well for a long time but i feel like there's probably people are like just as interested in seeing you get your shit together you know yeah i'm interested for people to watch this this one and the last one and see because last time i was fucking bottle whiskey definitely Mm -hmm. fucked up like bro and our story about (laughs) squashing shit on that that was hilarious that is a classic that people oh girl hit me up recently too and she's not she doesn't hate me no more she hated me 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 too like shout out to her for being super cool about that there we go oh she's totally gonna watch this (laughs) plot yeah many plot no shout out to her because that was what brought us together (laughs) yeah and it but dude man like those uh, days think about you those days i bet that That was your like downtown la mm. Probably some guy taking a shit right outside the store. Crazy right then. fuck days, bro. I, I just think about that, those days of how I looked at you, and I remember just like thinking, like it's so tight that he's able to like live this way, but wondering how real it could be. Yeah, you know. And then when I think back about it, it's like I think I always kind of sensed that there was something that just wasn't really like right about how po- all the positivity it just felt sort of unsustainable right which is like the definition of that's what drugs and alcohol are, do they make you fun they make you have a good time but it's totally unsustainable it's unsustainable and like like i believe in the power of positivity 100 percent. you know what i'm saying i believe in that um but i was really pushing um the first the first phase of of what i've come to know is my kind of story out here which is that like the law of attraction the idea of mentality becoming reality that'll take you very far it'll Mm. take you very far to believe in yourself to wake up and be thinking positively about your future it'll take you a long ways um it won't get you across the finish line Mm. by any means and so these people that are teaching the secret and the law of attraction are telling you you know just fucking the juju you know just be be good it'll be good it's like bro you're kind of not telling the whole story here Mm. And that's where I was led into. I, I I put a lot of it onto those ideologies of being like, yo, like mentality, reality, ma- manifesting. And then it's like, but you take away the human experience. Right. And to take away, you know, I didn't say the word sad for 10 years, 
for 10 fucking years, I didn't say the word sad. It was like the most cannot use word that I had inside me mm. and never told anyone I was sad, never said the word sad. I would be fucking sad and someone would walk in and I'd be like, hey, how you doing? Yeah. Mm. And, and it's just, that takes away from a lot of the human experiences, mm. which is just. You got to live the highs and the lows. You got to feel it. Exactly, bro. And I just released a brand new song called Uppers and Downers. Mm. And which is about, it's like, it's about meeting in the middle, you know? And it's like <clears throat> being able to deal with the the highs and lows. I feel like Quincy Jones said this great thing that was like, if you spend enough time in the valleys, the peaks will start to take care of themselves. And I feel like I'm thoroughly in the valleys right now. Right. And, um, and I was looking at what I thought was the peak for so long and... Um, and it wasn't, man. It wasn't. It just wasn't. I was wrong for a lot, a lot of, a lot of times in my career, in my life, I've been wrong. You know what I'm saying? Let me ask you this: Does it help a lot knowing that there are probably a lot of people now who are looking at you like they're so proud of you and they're so happy for you, and knowing how let down they would all be if you fucked it up tomorrow? Yeah, I feel like I feel very fortunate for that, and I also feel like I owe them a lot. Mm -hmm. Like I, like on this next tour that I'm doing. I don't think that I should be doing paid meet and greets. I feel like I should be doing that for fucking free. Really? Because you were so fucked up on all the ones you did before? Because I was so fucked up, bro. Wow. And they were paying me hundreds of dollars to come and say hi to me, and I wasn't even fucking there. Wow. And I feel like that was fucked up of me. And like I said, I've been wrong. I'm so open to being wrong. I thought I was right about everything, bro. And... I wasn't, bro. It brought me to a very fucked up place. You know what I'm saying? This social media shit will get you in your head. This ego shit will get you in your head. This These famous girls will get you in your head. Like, all this shit really, really affects you. And, and if you just try to go about it with not dealing with it, you're going to have to live it in your future. So it's like, now is the best time. You know, and, and like, bro, like, we're on fucking no jumper. Like, there's nothing more I'd want to do than to be here and talk about like, yeah, man, I was just with Dicker and I was doing that and blah, blah, blah. And I got new music and all that. But it's like, bro, this is important. This is important. And I know that there's someone out there watching. I absolutely know 100% there's someone out there watching that needs a boost, that needs someone to say like, yo, you have this forever now. You can pull it up and watch and know that like, yo, what you're going through, I, I, I was thoroughly there. I'm doing better. You can get better. You can all fucking go to the promised land that you want to get to, but it takes, it takes a drive. It takes not wanting to do it by yourself. I would love to read that in the comments. It's my, one of my favorite things to hear. Uh, is, 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 I would just hope that like there would be some people watching this who could look at both of us and be like, damn, like they were in varying levels of fucked up in this, but we were at different points in our lives that like we've just gotten a lot better over yes. the past year, yes. a couple of years. That's amazing. That's like, it is, it, hope, I hope that motivates people, you know? I think it thoroughly will. I think it comes off as real and authentic because it's like, Look, whoever's out there dealing dealing with whatever they're dealing with, like, there's no nerd shit about this. I thought being sober was nerdy. I mm. thought talking about shit like this was fucking square. I thought all this shit, I thought, I thought <laughs> saying I'm not going to hang out with girls for a month. Like, I, that sounds like nerdy to me, but bro, this shit, it's, it's really, just saying the word mental health and all that shit feels gross to me. But it's like, bro, we're in a weird time where... Everything is being thrown at us so fast. And the one thing that we can control is like how we emote and relate to other people. And like this real life shit that we're doing, like I hope that this can serve is just like, it doesn't matter. You don't have to stop today. You don't mm. have to say, fuck this life I'm living and all that shit and change. But like, look, like it's going to happen. It's right there. You're not stuck where you're at. <laughs> you're not That's stuck. That's the most important thing. A lot you're of people feel like they eat, wake up and eat McDonald's every day and they got to keep eating McDonald's for the rest of their life and that they can't get it, that they just can't make a change. And it's like, I think that's the most important thing is just to know that like whatever kind of habits you got, they're in your own control. And, and that's, that's such a great point. And like, like we would be sad if you died, but we're very sad if you just tell us about what you're going through, you're going to get the sympathy that you want. And a lot of people are stuck in a place where they just want sympathy. And it's like, fucking do what I did. Open up your camera on your laptop. Post a video talking about all the true shit in your life and clean. Like, that's what they talk about in AAs. They talk about clean house. Mm. Okay? You got a clean house. Like, step nine in the steps is you got to go to every single person in person. If it won't cause you bodily harm, you have to in person go to them and apologize for what you did to them. And like, dude, that's life. 
Mm. Clean house. Start. You can start fresh. Apologize. Forgive yourself. Forgive the people that hurt you. Apologize. This shit is so beautiful. It's like it's it's so much more fun than being an egomaniac. It's so much more fun than just being like I'm a fucking star. Like notice me. It's like yo, well this star just had a real human moment and just apologized to me. Like bro, I'm I'm getting ready to start stuff and I have to fucking fly around the country and to say come. sorry to people. Yeah, wow. hell yeah. And I'm so excited to do it. I'm excited to do it. I'm excited to feel like I, like I'm not holding on to this shit. And I think the best first step that you guys can make, if anyone out there is, and if you're not dealing with drugs, if you're dealing with just trauma, if you're dealing with shit that happened to you when you're a kid, turn on the fucking computer, and film yourself talking about it and posting it. Cause like I, I promise you, I don't know why it works like that, but it does. It fucking does. It works. And you know, of course, there's 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 a moment of fright for being so sensitive or all that shit but like bro i'll cry right now i'll cry right now in front of all of you like i i am so happy to be here i'm also so sorry for who i was i'm also just like ecstatic to still be given opportunities i'm happy for my future i'm happy that that this can lead to whatever it can lead to man just be open just believe in yourself make a change today that's beautiful yeah <laughs> Can I ask you one more question? Yes, please, please. Are you still a Claremont twin? Ah, I just talked to her. I love sh Shannon. Is a, Shannon is an angel, yo? Were she. You, are you guys dating, I, or were you dating? There's, there was a. I fucked it up. Really? I fucked it up. Yeah. Was this during the sober part of your existence? Yeah, it yeah, was, huh? Yeah. She, yeah, she wanted to fuck with me if I wasn't sober. Right. I, I just know. We've had conversations about it. I was like, yo, this is who I was, by the way. She was like. Yeah, because I was wondering. I'm like, she doesn't seem like she's getting fucked up. I wonder what she thinks about that. No, no, she. Out. Yeah, I've never actually seen her do a drug, nothing like that. She's um, dude, she's fucking awesome. If I can do one thing good in this interview, it would just be like, yo, shout out to that time that we had in our life because she she's fucking awesome. And, um, and free the other one. Yo, free Shanae for real. Mm. Honestly, I love I love those girls. I actually haven't met her sister, but I love <laughs> Shannon. I love Shannon. She's special, but yeah, I fucked that up. But yeah. but we'll probably have we have we could have a future together. We work good together. And yeah. she fucking hot as shit. Are you just what well, damn, I bet you were all up in that. God damn, that's crazy. Honestly, I'm lucky. I'm lucky. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it right now. I'm a I lucky would pay boy. For that porno movie, bro. I'm a lucky boy, bro. I'm Slide a lucky boy. Slide the revenge porn. Send yo, it yo, don't shoot no pornos I'm, on your phone, bro. No? Why you got your shit hacked? Just don't do it. Trust me. <laughs> just trust me. Don't do it. Really? Don't damn. do it. Don't fucking do it. Just don't. Just don't get buy a VHS. That's what I do. Mm. <laughs> buy That's buy an old camera, right? bro. And I just <laughs> <laughs> fuck that. R. Kelly is one person that could tell you don't record shit. Don't record on your fucking phone. The cloud is there. It's just. Mm. And people would be getting hacked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. She, yeah, that happened, huh? Yes. <laughs> yes. Be careful, man. Um, but, yo, I know we're probably coming to an end, but, like, but uh, I'm making the best music in my life right now. Yeah. Um, finally, like, finally uh, about to make some really big moves. You know, some shit's just actually happening for me. And I just released a brand new song called Uppers and Downers. I released one not too long ago called I Remember Way Too Much. Both are doing great. And I'm very fucking proud of my music right now. That's awesome. So I have a great future coming with um, with my music. I have some really great songs. I have an album dropping in January. I'm going on tour in March. Hell yeah. Bro, I'm proud of you. When I was saying like that there's people out there who are going to be really disappointed if you fuck up, that yeah. was definitely one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like I know, invested and that, in this now. And that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big responsibility. So like if, if, if you know, I'm praying to God that that doesn't happen. If it does, you'll hear about it. Next time you're eyeing down a fucking Colombian <laughs> anaconda that you're thinking about hoovering up, just Bro, keep, a, keep someone so like me in mind. Like, damn, every... there's a lot of people who are going to be really bummed if I do this. Yes. No, yeah. 100%. It's a, it's, it's a responsibility that I'm actually glad to take. But like, bro, it is so hard watching like anything. It's so funny how every tv show be, okay by the way it's not nerdy either if y'all just want to fucking just become a movie fanatic tv show fanatic do that shit it's okay i've watched like every movie out right now i've watched every tv show out right now i can tell you about anything but like every tv show bro they're all doing cocaine right now mm, and drinking 
Oh, every yeah. TV yeah, show I, ever I is just like, oh, let me light my cigarette oh my and pour you a bro, drink as we begin bro, this conversation. I, California Cajun is one of my favorite shows ever, and like, I honestly feel like that that shit got so deep under my skin. I was mm. like, I want to be a writer who's getting fucked up, fucking bad bitches all the time. That's mm. all I want. And lo and behold, <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, it gets you halfway. Yeah. Yeah. You get yeah, halfway. A little, a little way. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. Hey, I really appreciate you having this conversation with me, man. Man, thank you for having me. Honestly, this is our second one, everybody. Doesn't happen much on No Jumper. Deuce, a revisit. Deuce. He brought me, so I appreciate it. I love you, man. Bro, seriously, it means a lot. I hope. Th I think that there's probably a lot of people that are going to get a lot out of this. I will, I will promise you I'll be reading every single comment because I don't got much else to do right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read all the comments because I'm obsessed I'll with this reading. fucking YouTube channel and yeah, I still it, do that see, shit. See, those numbers mean something to you. So, hey, comment three times for Moz Hunt. Right? I, I read three comments times. way more than I should be reading comments after doing this I don't for believe, I don't believe that. I believe it's so true. I believe you can learn way more from a critique than a compliment anyway. Mm. So, like, I'm not even kidding when I say, like, I actually, like, take tips and advice from the comments saying bad oh, yeah. shit about about me i will be like hmm the most hate is probably where you can learn the most I, bro honestly i'd be reading every comment always i fuck with it i'm like yo you know what i'm really lucky too because i don't get that much hate but like but like there was definitely i mean dude there's a time i'm like there's a time where literally last year it was like just an onslaught of hate mm. every every day from her fans yeah, just like just like normal America that sees mm. fucking Snapchat and fucking Daily Mail and shit that are like crackhead, fucking mad that I'm like, bro, I'm a cokehead. No, I'm yeah. just kidding. <laughs> this is Hollywood. <laughs> this is what we do. I ain't no crackhead, all right?